This video is going to be about the roof, getting a roof on this building here. But uh, And I got started on it, but as I got started on it, I noticed a little mistake that I had made in the walls, which are going to have to be fixed before I can finalize the roof. And I'll show you, show you what's going on here. I, I outline the shape of the roof. I'll go into that in more detail in a few minutes. And then I, I worked it out over across the whole rectangle of the building. And <clears throat> as you may recall, there are these what are called rusticated coins on either side of the entrance, which project out several inches, and which I had in a previous video shown how I decided to bring them out roughly eight inches, if I recall. Yes, eight inches. Well, going from the photos, it had seemed that these at the corners projected out a similar amount. But after I looked at the photos more carefully, I saw that they did not. Because what happened is when I try to wrap the roof around, I end up with this piece of the corners sticking out at each corner. See how it projects forward from this line to this line. It projects forward, wraps around, and then steps back again. And on the actual building, it does not do that. I will insert a photo from the book showing that. What I'm going to have to do is fix these corners first. And then once I've done that, the roof, the roof will continue to wrap around evenly. So I'll come back to this after I have made that correction. It's just going to be a simple matter of setting setting this face here that's highlighted flush with the wall surface. That was seven and a quarter inches. We see down at the bottom right of the screen, seven and a quarter inches. And then pushing these back seven and a quarter inches, the same amount. So now they appear on the surface, but they don't project out as much as these over here. In fact, they just project out about an inch, that's all. So, and then after I've done that, <clears throat> I will need to repair the cornice as well. All right, I've turned off the roof for the moment, and I'm going to get into this corner here and do some repair work on it. I'm going to go ahead and just go through the steps right now. I'm going to need to get rid of a bunch of this stuff, but it's all connected. So here's one way to do a fix like this. I'm going to start by making myself a rectangle, simple rectangle, bigger than bigger than the area I want to remove. So I'm going to move that rectangle and I'll pop it right there for now. Anywhere in the area is fine. And I'm going to make another one. Rotate it. Q for rotate. Around the vertical axis, that's the up arrow, 90 degrees. And I'm going to move it so that it intersects over here somewhere. So now I have two planes that intersect the cornice. And what I can do is double click on that plane, double click on that plane, right click, intersect faces with model. Do the same on this one. Right click, intersect faces with model. Now this chunk is separated from that chunk. You see when I click, they highlight as separate pieces. That makes it easier to erase, selectively erase the stuff I want to get rid of. Come in here and get rid of this. Come around here and get rid of this. And now what I will do is I will connect this to that by 
using a line. Let's see if this works. A line, creating a path that I want to follow. Select my path. And then tools, follow me. Control F is the shortcut. Select the face that I want to extrude along that path. So now those line up. Only problem is that it broke the hidden faces of these curves. So I'll have to go back in with my erase tool, holding shift down so that I'm just hiding these lines rather than actually erasing them. Okay, I've cleaned up the cornice around the corner. I cut away and re I cut out what I need to get rid of and re uh, continued the cornice around the corner properly. Now I can get rid of these two cutting planes. I can just use delete to get rid of those. And the uh, surfaces will heal themselves back up again. I had. Um, I use the erase with shift command E shift to get rid of the hidden lines. They're still there as necessary geometry, but you don't see the lines that you don't want. Now, the last thing I need to do to, to clean up this corner is um, these little brackets under the E. If we look at them, we'll see that this one is not spaced the same as the others. That was because that was where this, we started the whole wrapping part. So what I need to do is I need to have these all wrap continuing equally spaced up to this corner and then they'll go around. What else, uh, uh, so what I'm going to do for a start is copy this guy here. Move, control, copy it from the corner to this corner. And I'm going to put it inside this group here. Okay, he's inside the group with the rest of these brackets. Still doesn't get in there. Try one more time. Okay, now he's in the group with the rest of these brackets. Now what I'm going to do <clears throat> is erase all these brackets and keep just the first one down at the end. And I'm going to copy this one to the other to the to the left end, and then use the divide command to um, create a bunch of copies. So I'm going to copy it down to the end position and then I believe I only need 38. So divide 38. Check the distance between them. Just about six inches and the brackets are three inches wide so it's roughly one to two which is a good proportion. Now I have got an extra one down at this end. I will delete that. And that's all cleaned up now. So what I did was use the move command. That's M, shortcut M. I moved or made a copy using control M. Copied the bracket from the far right over to the far left. And then I typed divide 38. And that made, it divided the space in between into 38 parts of the copy at each point. That way they're all equally spaced. So I've cleaned up the front, and I will need to go down the side with more of the same brackets, using the same basic approach, which I'll do later on. Don't need to see that here. I'm going to turn the roof on and explain a little bit about the roof now. So this house, I have decisions to make about the roof. The design we're basing from has a fairly low roof slope. I believe it is an 8-inch rise for a 12-inch run. So it doesn't really provide a whole lot of attic space. It's not a living, livable attic. So if it's not a livable attic, you know, there's not enough headroom to have a, to really make full rooms out of it. And this has no dormers or anything to bring in light. Then cost effective approach would just be to use uh, prefabricated roof trusses. They're a very uh, inexpensive way to put a roof on a house. And um, can still do it in a way that a little bit of storage can be had up there, and we probably will uh, do that. There will be an attic access hatch in a hallway somewhere upstairs that you can go up the hatch ladder and store a few things up there. 
but it's not going to be you know livable Editing space in here a little bit more about these prefabricated roof trusses for those of you who aren't familiar with them <clears throat> the roof could either be framed on site by the carpenters doing the rest of the framing which is pretty much self-explanatory and then alternatively prefabricated trusses could be brought in uh, they typically arrive on the back of a flatbed on the back of a flatbed truck which has got a crane attached and they're all ganged together and uh, and then they're craned up onto the top of the walls and spaced out accordingly here we see them ganged together ready for shipping out to a job site they can come in a wide variety of shapes the ones you see most often are fink and how these types here are the most common they really provide no usable attic space because everything is so broken up. An alternative is this type of arrangement called attic. Let's see if I can zoom in for you a little bit. This type of attic truss um, is arranged to allow more space. Uh, it has to be, it needs extra reinforcing in order to work. So it's a little bit more expensive. Also, you'll want to make sure that there's where you have the thinnest section here, that there's enough space for adequate insulation for your roof insulation to pass through. But that's one way to gain a little bit of usable space in a prefabricated truss roof. The uh, roof manu the truss manufacturers typically have an engineer on their staff and they produce their own engineering calculations and drawings before they fabricate the trusses. The house designer would just simply give them the general outline, the, the basic roof slopes, the ridge, the valleys, etc. And then the manufacturer would determine how to break that up into separate pieces that can be manufactured as individual trusses. And here's a picture of trusses in place under, under, under installation. You can see the crane up here is still holding a couple of these trusses up as these workers brace them in, into position. So what I did was I did a I drew out to scale a, a section a rough section simplified of how that attic roof would be framed. That's this triangular piece we're looking at here. We have we have the top of the wall. The wall would extend down. I just drew the um, very top bit of it, and then I provided 12 inches here, one foot. This is what they call a raised heel truss. We could build the truss so it's coming down much lower to the roof, but the advantage of a raised heel truss is it allows us to maintain full insulation all the way between the wall and the roof. So 10 to 12 inches is typical for a raised heel truss. I went with 12. And then this section up here, that would represent, say, a 2 by 6, which would be part of the roof trusses. I got it sloped properly. I allowed another inch above that to account for a half inch plywood roof sheathing and another half inch for roof shingles. And then I had to work out something to sweep the roof line out to the cornice, which you can see the cornice extends considerably out from the walls. And the roof line has a kind of a sweep to reach out to the cornice. So that's what we're seeing here. And uh, in fact, if you look in the photos, which I'll put a photo in later on, I'll slice a photo into here. What we have is all of all of the all of the cornice from this line down is uh, stone, and this piece here, this top piece with a curve, is actually in the original. It's probably lead or lead coated metal of some kind, and it's a gutter. So we're not. There's actually a gutter in here, which I'll add in later, but that's a kind of a hidden way. It's a way to hide the gutter into the cornice. It's a pretty elegant way to handle that problem of what do you do about the gutter. So there will be no gutter that's attached to the outside of this. The gutter will be built in. It means a bit of custom sheet metal work, which will cost a little bit more, but it's, a, it's an area where you'll get a lot of bang for your buck. I'm editing in here a few images of these Cornices with gutters. Here's an example where the gutter is framed into the cornice. This is actually all done in wood. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you can see this is a piece of sheet metal that wraps around and up and continues up the slope of the roof with the shingles over it. 
Here's a st another similar example. There's the gutter in, in line with the outside face of the wall, and then it extends forward with a piece of sheet metal protecting, and a cover of more slates just uh, to match the look of the rest of the roof. And here's one more. This is a image from a 19th century book uh, drawing of an ancient uh, ancient Greek temple and here you see it actually done in stone and the, the top piece of stone which starts right there was formed in the shape of a gutter. So anyway I made this profile starting at the top of the wall and then I took this shape and turn this off for the moment. I drew a rectangle outlining the roof line. I'll do that. The R for rectangle. Make a group out of that. Double click make group. And then I'll make a copy of this. Control C, go into my group. Control Shift V, that's copy, that's paste in place. I'll move it. So I'll move it on the green axis. You see the green line is highlighted. I'll move it to the center. Now what I've got is, and then I'll explode it. So now I've got all of this stuff in a group here. Um, so what I can do is um, erase all of the miscellaneous interior lines that I don't need. All I, know, all I want here is the profile. So we're getting rid of all of the extraneous lines. Now that whole thing, let me get rid of this while we're at it. There. So now we see the profile of the roof. And we've got a series of lines outlining the perimeter. And I will use the follow me command, which is control F. I've selected my path. I'm going to use control F. And I'm going to click on the face that I want to extrude along that path. And it looks like I'll have a little cleaning up to do. I'll do that. Erase. E for erase. Select everything. I'm going to select all of the surfaces. I'm going to intersect the faces with the model. That gives me edges here, so when I erase, I don't lose stuff I want to keep. K, that, my shortcut for x-ray vision is K. It allows me to see inside, in case there's any bits inside that I want to get at. All right, turn the x-ray off. And the other thing, I, the last thing I need to do here is that I have the wrong face out. If you recall on SketchUp, faces have a good side and a bad side. You want all your good side, good faces out. So select my faces and reverse faces. Turns them white. And then I can apply a roofing material. Now I already did that, so I'm, that was just showing you the steps. I'm going to delete that and turn my roof back on. That's how I created what you see here. So that's how I built up the roof shape, and uh, then I just applied a, a roof material texture to, I may change the texture later on, but that just will keep me on track, makes it easier just to see the different parts. I'll have to go in here and uh, resolve how this pediment is, is working in with the roof, it's the same on the back side. I'll do that in uh, another video. I'll do that in the next video. If it seems like something worthwhile with sharing, I'll include it in the next video. Otherwise, it's basically just the same, same set of commands. Anyway, that gives us our roof line. Uh, we've got our, our total building outline set now. I've kind of locked myself in as far as, as, far as the, de the depth, this dimension here. If I want to change this, I'll have to redo the roof. Hopefully I won't want to change that. I'm starting to work out some floor plan ideas. I've got 
in mind a, a garage wing on one side that adjoins to the family room kitchen end and a master bedroom ground floor master bedroom wing on the other so that it will be a balanced elevation that'll work out the roof lines for those and then we'll work on some more of the inside anyway that's all for now hope you're enjoying the series come back for more like the video subscribe Check out the earlier videos in this series as well to see how we got to this point. Have a great day.